I don't expect everybody to make it through prison without any problems. I'm not sure what they call it where you're from, but where I'm from, they're called June Junes. I know we all know somebody that's on the streets that acts like they just so big, bad, and tough. But you want to know how they truly was when they were incarcerated? And nine times out of ten, they was a June June. And if you was a June June when you was incarcerated, you ain't going to like this video. But hey, this that real spill for you. Ha ha, I'm the best. Finna be this way till I EOS. Take it how you want, nigga. Yeah, I'm a pro. Fuck around, I bust your lot while you're at Vizzo. I hate to be this way, but I live for the moment. Waking up every day, show me an opponent. Shanks on deck, hitting bitches with locks. So much pool, I can even start you from the box. You don't wanna pay rent? Got me bent. Got lacks on deck, your money was well spent. Vultures on the prowl, so don't try test and step two. Cause violent first steps, finessing. You a hold down man? Suitcase this. My cell phone, I'm a charger, don't walk with a limp. Get it knocked off or missing? You gon' get it. Next time I see you ass, you gon' leave airlifted. What's up, everybody? You already know, man. K for all TV back in the building. Y'all go ahead and do me that solid favor. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. Welcome back to the channel. I want to tell everybody today I'm going to be speaking on June Junes. All right? This video right here is for the Jizzles. All right? That is another thing that we call them down here in Florida. Jizzles. Now, what made me want to do this video is because I see a lot of people, you know, that claim they big, bad, and tough. Right? But you won't believe how many of them people I seen when I was incarcerated. That was a June June. So for this video, you're going to get the perfect breakdown of what a June June is. The perfect breakdown of how to spot a June June when you see them across the compound. You know what I'm saying? It's like the scent is in the air. You could, you could smell, oh yeah, that boy's a jizzle. See what I'm saying? I'm going to break it down to y'all. I'm going to let y'all know how it goes down here in the state of Florida. Now, before we get any farther though, I do want to say this. I'm not sure what they call it in other states or other places around the world. So if they call them something different, feel free to drop it in the comment section. You feel me? But down here in the state of Florida, we call them Jizzles, a.k.a. June Junes. All right. Now, a June June is one of the people that do whatever they're told. Literally. It's like their whole body and every single thing about them is pain in order to stay on the compound. It don't get more straighter than that. Literally. I mean, whatever someone wants them to do, they have to do. Literally. If they want them to hold something, they got to hold it. If they want them to crash someone, they got to crash them. If they want them to buy them something, they got to buy it. If they want them to wash their drawers, they got to wash them. Sweep and clean their cell, they got to do it. Clean the toilet bowl and fucking clean the sink. Scrub it with sandpaper or toothbrush. They have to do it. Whatever it is, that's what a June June is. A June June is someone that basically is paying with whatever they can in order to get by while they are in there. Now, I've came across so many of them in prison. And I hate to say this because I'm white, you know, but literally majority of the white boys that you come across down here in the state of Florida prison, not all of them. But a lot of them are June Junes. A lot of them will break it off. Or a lot of them are in the clear now, but it broke it off and was a June June somewhere else. Okay? You got people that don't know how to read. You know what I'm saying? And don't know how to write. That will literally have someone read and write their letters for them. Like, I got mail, bro. Alright? You know what time it is. Come on, let's go to the cell. <laughs> and lay there and it's like you're reading me a bedtime story. Yeah, what they say? What they say? All right, all right. Well, write this. Look, I want you to write this. You feel me? Like, basically, like I said, they pay to stay there. And even if it isn't financially, you know, with money, you know, or canteen or commissary or PayPal's or MoneyGram or Green Dots or, you know, tobacco or Tunchi, which is, you know, K2 or cell phones, whatever it is, they are somehow helping someone else. Okay, and that person will protect that individual. That person will make sure nobody tries to rob that person. Nobody tries to bully them, pick on them, you know, extort them, any of that shit. You feel me? And, you know, like you could sense when someone is a June June just due to the fact that he acts like that other person is his war daddy. Okay, which like all of his problems he brings to that person. Anytime he gets into it, that person speaks in and, and sticks up for them. You know what I'm saying? It's different if you got homeboys and your homeboys get involved because you get into some shit. But a June June is to where everybody knows that that person belongs to that person. 
You feel me? And it don't have to be no sexual stuff or anything like that. It could just be like a, you know, hold my pocket type shit and walk around this compound. Or if I tell you to go on that side of the compound and pick something up for me, you do it. You don't speak back when spoken to. And it would blow your mind how many people are actually like that in prison. Straight up. And they don't all show their hand. You know, there's ones that actually make it through their bid without even being exposed, without even being on the radar. You feel me? There's people that whizzled their way through prison without being a June June that literally have it in them to be a June June. And then those are the ones that will come home and act like, oh, prison wasn't all that. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. I could do it again. It wasn't that, you know, they made it through manly. It was just that no one felt like jizzling them. Or anyone who was on that June June and shit wasn't there at the time to put down on them. Because like I say all the time, pressure bust pipes. If someone ain't living like that and they're ste and you know they're steady getting tried and drilled and people are trying to put down on them and take shit from them and make them break it off or make them make their bed or wash their dirty dish or you know whatever it may be. If someone really wanted to you know apply that pressure, a lot of people will break and a lot of people do break when that pressure comes. You feel me? Some people don't even really be wanting the shit out of people that they say they do. You feel me? They'll just do it to show that you're not living like that. Because in prison, everyone that's there is either there for breaking the law, committing a crime, or being around or involved some kind of way. You feel me? So everyone's always got that bigger ego. Everyone feels like they're more of the alpha male than the next person. That's why a lot of people don't get along. You see what I'm saying? So it makes people feel good inside that they made another person bow down to them. It looks like they're pawns and they're the king. You see what I'm saying? So people were literally just June June someone just to prove he ain't a threat. He ain't an alpha male. He's not even acting like a male. He's more of a female. You see what I'm saying? But it blows my mind because I've literally came across people in prison that were gang members. Okay? And been banging that shit on the compound. They got a bunch of brothers. They claim they repping it to the fullest and all that shit. But then you really find out they was only repping it because of the numbers and the people who was there with them. Then someone else will come from another camp. You feel me? That's literally not even a gang member that was known at other camps for having this same gang member is his Junju. Now his gang is on his ass because, boy, you was a Junju before you came a gang member. You see? So that shows you basically came home for protection. You know, and that's what a lot of people actually do, believe it or not. There's so many people out there, man, that will not make it on their own. It is unreal. When you find yourself in that damn cell, in that six by 10, and it's you and one other person in there, knives, you know, locks, razors, broomsticks, you know, all that shit, you got to stand on your own two feet. That's when you find out if you're a man. Becoming a gang member, that shit don't make you a man. Straight up. No disrespect to the gangs, though. But at the same time, a lot of people can't make it on their own. You feel me? Because they would have been jizzled. Man, I seen people in prison. Check this out. There was a whole squad of white boys at the first main camp I went to. There was like seven of them walking around. And they would all drop the same tattoo on them. They all wrote Savage Life on them. Okay? Savage Life is what they all wrote. And one of my homeboys... Was like, yeah, dog, you feel me? That's that's the little click of June June. You feel me? I'm like, yeah. He like, yeah, you feel me? They all, you know what I'm saying? I'd be like, what's up, y'all boys? What y'all, what y'all rep? What's up? And they'd be like, Savage Life, Savage. They acted like they put a little click together called Savage Life. And then, you know, all them boys would amp them up and shit like that. But in all reality, they're laughing behind their back because they know they're not a threat. They know they're nothing serious. Okay? They know that they will not bust a grape. You feel me? So these dudes were all getting savage like Tad and that like they're repping a the click. Like they're truly living like that. And in all reality, that shit was known as a, a jizzle. A June June click. You feel me? And when they'd walk out the door and they'd be like, savage life. You feel me? Shit like that. And they were literally getting it tatted and stuff like that. And the perfect prime example of someone that tries to act like they're living like that. You know, or someone that claims that they're, they're, because they're all tatted up, they're goons, they're this, they're that. A perfect example of them is the two clowns, the island boys. 
Y'all know who they are. They've been going viral lately. Them two dudes right there will be straight June Junes in prison. And they're from down here in Florida. They're one county away in Palm Beach. You feel me? Them two dudes are a perfect example, though, of what a June June looks like. They would come in, they would go to prison, and I guarantee you, not just now because they're getting a little money or whatever it is, you could just look at them and tell that they will be forced to break it off. They'll be so scared. They'll try to be cool and buddy buddy with anybody who will give them the chance of making them, you know, feel safe. And this is facts. I'm being 100 with you. You know what I'm saying? And I've seen people that are not, it ain't just because they're scrawny and all tatted and they try to act like they're so thugged out and all that. No, it isn't just that. I've seen people who weren't all scrawny and who weren't all small and everything that were June Junes. You understand? Size don't mean nothing when it comes to being a June June. All right? I told this a long time ago when I was in prison that the football player, Deion Sanders, okay, his nephew was in the prison I was at. He was breaking it off. You feel me? And he wasn't no small black dude. You see what I'm saying? He was still a June June though. He was paying rent, doing what he had to do because them boys in there knew that boy, his uncle going to drop that bag and cut that check. So it's like the bigger you are and the more you claim you're a threat, if you truly ain't living like that, you're going to have 101 more problems and you're going to have 101 more people trying to press you, trying to come at you, trying to make you break it off, make you, you feel me, make you pay for whatever they feel like they want. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just being real with you. If you aren't living like that and you go to prison like you're not living like that and, and, and be yourself, then people are actually, you know, they, they get avoided way more than the people who try to act like they're living like that that aren't, believe it or not. It ain't like if you go in there and they know you're soft, they're going to take shit from you and they're going to put down on you and they're going to make you break it off. It is highly possible. Don't get me wrong. It definitely can and it definitely most likely will happen. But if you're one of them people that try to act like you're living like that and you want to floss like you got all this money and you're truly a goon, you're all tatted up and you talk like you're from the hood and swear you're, you're a savage and all that, you're going to get pressed even more. Straight up. And if you're someone that's been to prison and you had a bad experience when you was in there and you fit that category that I'm talking about, this jizzle, this June June shit, then you know I'm talking straight to you. You feel me? You ain't supposed to come home from prison and act like you made it through your bid and it was all gravy. It was all peaches and cream. Didn't nobody try you. That shit was weak. You know, telling all your friends fake stories and all that. Nah, you keep that shit 100 with them. Because in the long run, you might save them from getting locked up like your soft ass did. I'm being real with you. But I guarantee you, the percentage wise, nobody keeps it real like that. Nobody is going to come home and say they was a June June up the road. And check this out. There's also people in prison that are June Junes that don't even know they're being jizzled. Tell me that ain't crazy. So you might be in there and think, oh, that's your dog. You're all friendly, this and this and that. But then, you know, you won't think about it. You've been cool with this person for 12 months, a whole year. Y'all been vibed out and everything like that. He gets involved in all the situations you get into. Nobody messes with you. Anytime someone tried to mess with you, they all of a sudden, you know, decided not to mess with you. That's because it was on his face and they fell back because of him. But then you never caught on that every time it was always you giving and him receiving stuff. But it was never the other way around. Right? So you thought you had a friend, but really you didn't. You was just being jizzled. And instead of using violence, they used finessing. That's what happens to a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're in there, you feel like, man, it's me against the world, man. I need somebody to, you know, lean on. You know, I need someone to feel like I got a road dog with me or something like that. Ain't one person that I was in prison with or the county or the juvenile program or nothing that I ever showed love to and broke bread with that ain't never broke bread back. Ever. Every single time. Anybody that ever got anything from me that was considered a homeboy, I got shit from them also. It was never the other way around because I learned from seeing people being jizzled at a young age. When I was in my juvenile program, you feel me? I seen people being jizzled. I already knew what a June June was before I even went to the chain gang. 
I remember sitting in the county jail one time in black and white and some kid came in and he had June bug tatted across his head right here, across his eyebrow. That was his nickname. And I remember saying to him, I said, I said, you got June bug tatted on your eyebrow? Because I always knew, you know, June June is what they call people in jail. He was like, yeah, yeah, that's my nickname though, you feel me? And I remember telling him, I'm like, boy, if you ever go out the road, boy, you know, June June's is what they call people that they make break it off. You know what I'm saying? He was some black kid from Lauderdale. And he was like, man, shit, bro, I ain't worried about that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But just let alone, boy, someone made him stamp it. Just like at the institution I was at when them boys stamped Savage Life on them. You feel me? They're thinking, yeah, Savage Life this, uh, and all that. Nah, bro. Everyone used to make fun of their ass and make them pay enough canteen to feed the whole dorm. Straight up. So they got to walk around the compound and talk any kind of way and act any kind of way because people made fun of them behind their back. People knew it was, it was, it was, it was, it was for them. It was the better, it was beneficial for them to let them do that rather than making them check in or, or hit them with violence or, you know, try to approach them any type of way that led to some type of physical harm. There was no reason to do that. Instead, you just play the cool role. You know what I'm saying? And you fall back and you just laugh in their face, act like they're your little homeboys and shit, but you got them breaking bread. Straight up. And I've seen it happen so many times. Mind blowing. I've seen small and big people that were June Junes. Gang members that were June Junes. I've seen people that literally were wetting people up in prison. That were known for wetting people up in prison. Other people would come land at that camp later on down the line and expose that that was their June June at their last camp. Then word goes around like, nah, for real. And then the person who it was, I'll never forget. Shout out to my homeboy 21 from Dade County. You feel me? He ain't nothing but like five foot tall. But he had a, G, a GD that was a gang member. You feel me? That was a gang member at this time. You feel me? That was his June June at his camp before. And the gang member was like this. And, and 21 was like this. Straight up. Little, little one, making them break that shit off, putting down on them, taking them for everything. You see? So size really don't matter, you know? But what it is, is you can see it. You can sense when someone's a June June. You know what I'm saying? You got people that just try to give you shit all the time. You know, that's the first step that people try to take advantage of. And like, oh, I'm going to jizzle this motherfucker. You feel me? Like off rip. If you walk in there, hey man, you got to, uh, I want to trade a chicken for beef soup. Feel me? I got chicken. You got beef. Let me look at my locker. They look in their locker and they be like, yeah, bro, yeah, I got I got a beef one. And then when you go to swap them, they're like, nah, here, just take it. What you mean? I'm trying to, nah, nah, you're good, just take it. Nah, you just showed me a big old sign of weakness right there. Like, boy, you don't even want to do a deal with me, just giving me your soup. So now I'm going to be like, dang, he's sweet, you feel me? And I don't mean sweet like that. I mean, he's sweet like he's vulnerable. He's easy to get over on. He's easy to finesse. Shit, I'm going to try to finesse him and milk his ass out of his canteen before other people do. And that's exactly how it goes. You know what I'm saying? People want to be so friendly and give shit away, you know, trying to think that they're making friends. But in all reality, they're not. They're drawing more people in. People seeing you give that person a soup or people hear about it or he's going to tell people. And next thing you know, you're on people's radar and you don't even know it. You see what I'm saying? I'm telling you. Don't ever be one of them people that go in there and try to act like you're something you're not because that shit is going to get brought to the light straight up. And if you go in there and you swear you're living like that, or if you do one false move or one false eye angles, if you, if you supposed to be looking this way and you fuck around and look at the wrong person in their face when you walk them by and they make eye contact with you like that, bam, next thing you know, they're on the retina, who's that? And then boom, 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 they're all up on your trail and they want to know what you got and they'll come up to you trying to be friendly. Every time something happens in prison or someone comes at you, there was something behind it. There was a reason they came at you. Someone walking by and bumped their shoulder into you, that came from somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Someone cut you in line out of everybody in line. They cut you in line. It came from somewhere. You feel me? They want to see what your mind's on. They want to see how you react. They want to see what type of time you're on. You feel me? If you're going to be about it, if you're not going to be about it. You know? And a lot of times, same people that swear they living like that, act like they was gorillas, you'll find out that there was a June June somewhere else. For real. And you could just look at someone. You could spot them from a mile away. 
It's totally different than on the streets. Everybody can, you know, blend in and try to look cool or they'll wear different colors to stand out and look fly and all that shit. But in all reality, in prison, when everybody's wearing that same color and everyone looks identical, we don't have different outfits on. We got the same shit on in prison. On the streets, everybody's got different colors going on and everybody stands out and shit. That's how you notice them. You feel me? But it's just a precaution. They want to look like they're living like that. In all reality, they don't want no problems. They don't want no smoke. But in prison, everyone's wearing the same colors, same color uniform. You feel me? So you'd think they'd blend in even easier. You can fall back and look over and tell by the way someone walks and the way that they talk and the way that someone's talking to them and all that. You could tell, man, that's a June June right there. That boy's a jizzle. And I can't tell you how many times when I was in Florida prison, I had white boys come up to me acting like they wanted me to be their friend. In all reality, what it was is I was cool with the other races. I was cool with blacks and chicos. You feel me? I was cool with whites also. But what it is is they weren't getting respected like I was. They didn't care for them like they fucked with me. You feel me? So at the same time, they want to look like they can branch on to me and I'm going to protect them or something. But I'm not going to protect no one that's not going to protect yourself. If you ain't going to fight for yourself, I'm not going to fight for you. You get what I'm saying? So I can't tell you how many times, even in the county jail, when I'd sit in the county jail, the, the holding cell, waiting to go to court. You feel me? I'd see white boys walk by and they staring at me. And I'd look and I'd see them and I'd turn my head because as soon as you make eye contact with them, they're going to smile and come up and sit right next to you and just start talking your ear off. You feel me? So I'd see him and I'd turn my head because I ain't friendly. I'm not looking for no friends. You feel me? Straight up. I always learned in my life that your real friends are on one hand. You could count your real friends in one hand. Everyone else is just associates. Everyone else you come across is just associates. Your real friends are on one hand. So I damn sure ain't trying to make it look like I know you. They'll come in there and want to talk. Blah, 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 and I'll sit there and I'll say a couple words and then I'll, like, I'll, I'll cut them off. I'll turn this way or whatever and just you may feel me. I ain't here to meet nobody new. You know, but that's how it is. When I was in prison, I'll never forget when I first went to Washington Annex. Okay, I went from South Florida Reception Center to Orlando's Reception Center to Lake Butler's Reception Center to Washington Annex. And when I first went there, that prison right there had the most white inmates that I've ever seen at a compound. Literally. That's the only camp that I went to my whole prison bid where it was like a lot of whites compared to all the other, you know, races. And all of them. You feel me? Out of all of them, I'd say I'd have four a day come up to me. What's up, bro? Hey, hey, you from you from you from Putnam County? Or damn, bro, you from you from uh you from Lake County? Or you know they just come up to me and I'll be like, nah, bro, I ain't from over there. Damn, bro, why you look familiar, bro? And I'll be telling them, I don't know. Like, damn, hey, you from No, I'm not, bro. No, I'm not. Really, they just want a friend. They want to make it look like they knew me or, or what drew us to knowing each other is them saying, am I from where they from? Now we talk. No, I'm from here. Oh, I know people. Are, oh, yeah. Da, 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 da. Now they can tell people. Oh, yeah, I know, bro. He from over there. He from what's it called? Nah, ain't none of that, bro. They used to always come up to me like clockwork. I'm talking about like when I got transferred, me and a bunch of people got transferred. That was at another camp with me. So as you're moving, you know, they start spreading everybody out. You know, some get off the bus, some don't, some go that way, some go there, some go there. So there was still a couple people that I was still vibing with that I knew from the camp that I was just at. You know what I'm saying? We just done went through a couple reception centers together. So like as I'm sitting there chopping it up with people I actually do know, you feel me, that I done did time with, you know, they come up and they be like, damn, bro, what's up, bro? Hey, you remember me, bitch? I was in the county with you, bro, in Putnam County. And this and that. And they try to dap me up and I'll leave them like high and dry. Like I'll just straight up look at them and be like, huh. And start laughing. I'll be like, bitch, I ain't never been locked up in Putnam County. You know what I'm saying? Oh, for real, my bad, bro. Where you from then, bro? Look, bro, I don't want to talk. You feel me? Like, straight up. No disrespect, bro, but I ain't trying to talk. Oh, hi, right, hi, right, I respect that. And they'll walk off. Later, I have someone else come up to me. Like, bro, it was just crazy. They were all looking for a friend. They was all trying to be cool, you know? And me, I ain't on that shit. You feel me? And sure enough, them same few people that I would peep, I'd see him later on in the chow hall or something, and I'd be peeping from across the rec yard, and I'll see him. You know what I'm saying? You know, my eyes are always open. I observe my surroundings very well, still to this day also. 
I'll be observant and I'll see them walking around and shit over there on the other side of the compound by the chow hall. And next thing you know, I'll see who they're always with, who's always saying stuff to them. It, it'd be like either a bigger white dude than them or a white dude that they all look up to. Or it'll be a, a black guy or a Spanish dude like putting down, saying shit. Or like they'll come back from the chow hall and the big dude will like hand them all his shit. And then he'll walk and carry it back to the dorm for him. And it was like clockwork. I started peeping that. You know what I'm saying? Or like the chow hall scenario when I was watching him in this chow hall, he went in there and that guy gave him a bunch of trays. He carried them trays back to the dorm. These dudes happen to be in the same quad as me. So when I'm in my dorm, I see when I go back, I see that dude that gave him the trays come back to the quad and grab all the trays and go around and start selling them now. You see what I'm saying? So it was like, he gave the dude these shits inside the chow hall, said bring them back to the dorm, and then had the same dude that, you know, brought him back to the dorm, the mule, had him sell them and all, going around the dorm trying to sell the trays, and then get all the money and bring it back to that same dude that was working in the kitchen. You see, that was his June June. That was his jizzle, his do boy. He did whatever he told him to do. And no, some people do that. You know, that's just how they want to do their bid. Me, that shit don't fly. Straight up. If I feel any type of insult or disrespect from what you're saying to me or how you come at me or the energy you're throwing out there, I'm going to address that shit straight up. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? Now, like I said, if you're watching this video and you was June June or you was a jizzle when you was in prison, you might not like this video. It is what it is. You know, you're not going to like every video, you know, but I know that I guarantee you there is a big population of people that went to prison, were June Junes, Came home and acted like that shit was all right. Try to play it all cool, lay homeboy, sweep it under the rug like nobody ever tried them. Like they didn't break this dude off. They wasn't making beds for this dude. They'll go around early in the morning while this dude's still sleeping. They'll go around early in the morning and ask people for, for, for a scoop of coffee. To make a coffee, to give it to this dude when he wakes up. Like shit like that, bro. You feel me? And like I said, man, if you keep it real with your friends, you know, you might stop them from going to prison like your soft ass did. I'm just being real. Today, I wanted to speak on June Junes. I want y'all to drop it in the comment section, man. Like I said, if they call it something else where you're from, you know, shit I want to know. Y'all know what I'm talking about, though. The way I'm breaking it down and letting y'all know, y'all seen them types before. I don't care where you was locked up at. It ain't even got to be here in the state of Florida. But the way I just described this and break it down, you've seen people like that. Wherever you was locked up at before. But they might not be called June Junes or Jizzle or a Doo Boy, you know, but you know damn right well what I'm getting at. Straight up. But anyways, I'm gonna wrap this video on up. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Like I always said, y'all make sure y'all hit that like subscribe button on the way out if you ain't hit it for when you first stopped in here. And always remember, like I tell y'all, you keep them rats, squares, clowns, chomos, pedos, wannabe island boys, fake ass gangbangers. Chomos, all them heavy gunners, them clowns, peons, clout chasers. You keep them all out your circle. And until next time, you already know, just the one and only Frog.